In this video, I will be talking about the bleed build that uses the Sword of Courage to proc projectiles whenever you inflict bleed. This isn't a new or unique build in any sense, but I want to talk about some interesting mechanics behind this build and ailment builds in general, and also share how I optimized the build for damage and survivability. First, we have to talk about Sword of Courage. This weapon will send out two projectiles to nearby enemies whenever you inflict bleed. There are two important things to note about this weapon. First is that the projectiles themselves deal physical damage, which means they can also proc bleed. And the second is that the projectiles always comes out from your location, instead of the enemy that got bleed inflicted on them. Let's say you are fighting a couple of enemies in the tower. Here is your character holding the Sword of Courage, and you are surrounded by four enemies. You attack one and cause bleeding on it. Then you shoot out two bleed projectiles. Let's say one hits the enemy you inflicted bleed on and kills it, and the other one hits another enemy. Now this projectile can pop bleed on the enemy which can cause you to shoot out two more projectiles and the projectiles can probably bleed again you shoot out two more probably bleed again, shoot out two more and you just clear the whole room with one swing to get this to work, we will need two things high bleed chance for consistency and high damage scaling for the projectiles. It turns out that getting high bleed chance is very easy. You get 10% bleed chance from the Bulwark passive and 90% from Bulwark Archon Fury, which adds up to 100%. I will talk about how we maintain high uptime on Archon Fury later when we talk about gear. For scaling the damage of the projectiles, the projectile, like most triggered effects, cannot crit or hit weak points. It has an element, and it can inflict the ailment related to the element. In this case, physical damage will increase the damage dealt by the projectiles, which is to be expected. The same goes with generic damage increases like Mark of Glory and damage to enemies affected by ailments like Bleed for example. While in Archon Fury, the damage also gets increased by Archon Fury damage. The most surprising thing that I've found out about this is that if you use your weapon techniques to inflict the bleed, the weapon technique damage bonus actually applies to the projectile. Here is the gear I'm using for this build. The weapon is obviously Sword of Courage. The secondaries, you want critical hit chance, weapon technique damage, then critical hit damage or weak point damage. The critical hit chance is very important here because it helps with the Lion Talisman and keeps our weapon technique charge up. Otherwise, you want weapon technique damage because it also scales the projectile damage, which is the main focus of this build. The amulet we are using is Empyrean Crest. It gives Archon Fury damage if you have more spirit than any other attribute. I do have more spirit than other attributes. But if you find you have more might or vitality over spirit, you can just come over to the skill page and get some points out of the might or vitality skill and put it in maybe banners or shield skills and you'll be good. For the charm, obviously, I'm using Lion Talisman to keep the weapon technique charge up. The first ring I'm using is Ancestral Band. This ring gives me Archon Fury Charge and Archon Fury Charge Speed whenever I hit a weak point. The secondaries prioritize Archon Fury Damage over Physical Damage and Damage to Bleeding Enemies. The next ring I'll be using is Zoe's Embrace. You can choose other rings. This is not the most important piece in the build, but it's just a nice ring because we will, we will be going for weak points since we want to keep the Archon Fury Charge up. The secondary is, if you want more damage, you can go for physical damage and damage to bleeding enemies, but I went for more resistances so I can nearly cap 
my air physical and void resistances. The lifestone and banner are pretty standard. Archon's tier and Mesa's banner. You can switch them out for any other banner or lifestone you want. It doesn't really matter. For the augments, there are four essential augments in this build. The first one being innervation. This extends the duration of Archon Fury by one second whenever you defeat an enemy. This is the augment that allows us to always stay in Archon Fury when we are in a fight, if we kill fast enough. The next one is Surety. It exposes the enemy's weak point whenever you hit an enemy with a Northern Technique. This allows us to expose weak points on enemies that maybe you can't parry. And it allows us to hit those weak points and keep our Archon Fury charge up. The next two are Loyalty and Absorption. They both give Archon Fury charge or Archon Fury charge speed whenever you hit a weak point. The rest of the augments are optional, but I'm using Mind Drift for more Archon Fury damage and Divine Conduit for Archon Fury charge speed. I'm also using God Speed. Mainly for the secondaries only, but the primary helps a little bit. The secondary gives me a lot of resistance. And the same goes with the Lion's Pride. It also gives me a lot of resistance. You can see that I didn't even use the last augment slot. Because it lacks my augment screen out. But if you want to, you can just use any spirit augment you want. And roll augment free damage on it. For the skill tree. This is a pretty standard damage and defense skill trait. We will not be taking any points into ailment because we already have 100% with Arkham Fury up. And if you like banners, you can take out s points from Rampage and Might to put in banners. And same goes with the shield stuff. But other than that, I think this is a pretty standard tree that most builds use. Finally, I want to talk about the problem with ailment builds. Mainly against bosses or high level enemies. We don't know how ailment inflicting actually works in the game, but my guess is that it is similar to the way players get inflicted. There is a bar that fills up every time you get hit by that element, and when it is full, the ailment gets inflicted. As the enemy levels go up, their ailment bar also becomes longer which makes it harder to apply them consistently even if you have 100% chance to inflict. You can see here that I am fighting the floor 48 boss in the tower and it took me several attacks to finally inflict bleed even in Archon Fury mode. And when I finally do, the boss is already near dead. This makes stats like damage to bleeding enemies very weak and just ailment builds in general very underpowered and we don't seem to have any way to make it better once we reach the 100% chance to inflict overall the build is still very powerful I made it to tower floor 50 with no boons solo pretty easily the micromanagement of Arkham free chart is pretty interesting to me and seeing the proc chains with the bleed projectiles is very satisfying. I hope this video is helpful and thanks for watching.